Hello, how are you today? I hope you're having a good one today. To start our session, let's have a prayer and a praise. Let's do that first. A couple of things that uh, came to mind this morning for, for the prayer side. Let's pray for the health of our county. And then we have a couple of our friends who will be leaving uh, after this, uh, this next week. Liang and Casey, they're on their way to uh, Oklahoma. Let's uh, lift them up in prayer. And finally, I uh, will uh, praise God for our health care workers. So let, let me uh, lift up those prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we uh, uh, are praying for the health of our county. Uh, there are many in this nation that uh, are suffering from this virus and uh, we uh, are particularly focused on uh, how this uh, virus is progressing in our county. And we pray that uh, uh, everyone will uh, be attentive and uh, will uh, recognize uh, the proper way to go in terms of uh, preventing the spread of the virus. We ask this in Jesus' name. And uh, we lift up to our friends. We lift up our friends uh, to you, Lord, uh, Liang and, and uh, Casey, and uh, we, uh, we ask that uh, you be with them during this move and uh, help them overcome all obstacles that might come up. Give them joy and peace, and uh, uh, we uh, will keep them in our hearts, remembering our time together. And uh, Lord, finally, uh, we uh, praise, praise you for uh, providing us with uh, health care workers uh, who uh, can uh, uh, provide the kind of care that's necessary to uh, cure those who come down with the, the uh, virus. So Lord, we ask all of this in your holy name. Amen. Okay, let's get started with, uh, with our uh, lesson today. We're going to jump over to Proverbs chapter 3. Uh, just a word about last week. We uh, got the message that we need to learn from our parents and teachers and don't stray from that teaching. There are serious consequences. Now this week, we're going to learn to trust God and in this way receive the best possible directions. The lesson, uh, if, uh, if you have a copy of the uh, study guide, Explore the Bible, uh, it begins on page 19. Now, just a word uh, about uh, chapter 1. Uh, we we uh, covered up, up to verse 20 last week, but uh, just a, a summary of what, uh, what else was in chapter 1. There's a scene that, the, that uh, Solomon constructs and, and he uh, embodies wisdom as a woman who's crying aloud in, in the public, in the, like in the marketplace. And uh, the message that he's getting across with this image is that uh, wisdom is available if you're willing to listen. So in chapters uh, 2 and 3, Solomon returns to the form uh, of a father or teacher uh, teaching his son or a student. And uh, chapter 2 spends most of its time uh, Implore, uh, uh, imploring us to uh, pursue wisdom. Uh, and, and there's three major points that uh, Solomon makes in this chapter two. Number one, listen to your teacher. Number two, admit that you have need of wisdom. And then number three, 
the message is seek wisdom fervently and sincerely. And as Bobby has mentioned in the past, to be sincere means that you must act from the center of your being and don't fake it. You want it and need it to make wise decisions. And remember, uh, Proverbs 1, 7 tells us, fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. That verse is repeated in chapter 9. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So let's uh, start this reading in chapter 3. And let's read uh, verses 1 through 4 to start. My son, don't forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commands, for they will bring you many days of full life and well-being. Never let loyalty and faithfulness leave you. Tie them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will find favor and high regard with God and people. Okay, verse 1, the teacher is exhorting the student, always remember what I teach you. But he makes the point, don't remember merely the words, but keep in your heart the true meaning of the instructions. And verse 2, uh, what he's saying there is your life will be meaningful and satisfying. And this isn't measured uh, purely in years. It's how you meet difficulties and overcome them. Uh, we're not guaranteed a long life in years, but it will be a satisfying life if we follow these instructions. Now in verse three, uh, the teacher is emphasizing two crucial characteristics of God, loyalty and faithfulness. And the message is lead a godly life. And uh, these characteristics are to be shown by the people of God, by those who are believers and uh, who have been saved. Taking a closer look here, loyalty, uh, we could substitute the words unconditional love for loyalty, something that's emphasized by uh, Paul in his letters to a large extent. And then faithfulness means never changing. Uh, these characteristics should be shown outwardly. That's indicated by uh, carrying, them, carrying them around your neck. But they must be anchored in internal belief and commitment. In other words, written on your heart. Now, to do this assures that you will have a right relationship with God and your fellow men. This phrase, a high regard with God and people, reminds us of Luke chapter 2, verse 52, when he says of Jesus, he grew in favor with God and with people. Okay, we'll go on now to the, uh, the next few verses, 5 through 8, in chapter 3. I'll, I'll begin by saying that verses 5 and 6 are two of the 100 verses that you should know by heart. And I think you'll recognize them as we read them. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways know him and he will make your paths straight. Don't be wise in your own eyes. 
Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. This will be healing for your body and strengthening for your bones. Okay, a right relationship with God by faith is what the teacher is, is uh, saying when, when we are to trust in the Lord with all our heart. And this trust leads to godly actions. The best decisions come from seeking God's will. Now, verse 6 uh, goes on to say, In whatever you do, seek God's guidance. He will lead you in the right direction. And don't think you uh, have it all, all figured out. Don't think that you have all the answers, as it uh, says in verse 7. A right relationship with God allows us to recognize evil. Jesus made this very clear and, and, and to our benefit when he gave us the Holy Spirit to dwell in us uh, when he left this earth. So we can recognize evil and thus turn away from it. Now, this attitude will be like medicine, is what the teacher is saying in verse 8. It's good for your flesh and bones. In other words, it leads to a real sense of well-being. To continue, let's start verses and read verses 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first produce of your entire harvest. Then your barns will be completely filled and your vats will overflow with new wine. The uh, teacher is leading us to bring glory to God by giving of what we own. We want to give for the worship of God, support God's work, support those in need. And uh, we are uh, encouraged to take it off the top of your income. Now, verse 10 doesn't suggest that in a prosperity gospel. What you give will not take away from what you need. So, what you need is something in the barn and something in the vat. But you will find by dealing generously with what you have, you in fact will have plenty. Now, verses 11 and 12 will close with these. Uh, the teacher doesn't want us to uh, believe that all is sunshine. He's, he's going to point out that uh, into each life some rain will fall. So let's read the verses 11 and 12. Do not despise the Lord's instruction, my son, and do not loathe his discipline. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves just as a father disciplines the son in whom he delights. Now, God brings divine action to confront and change sinful behavior. And uh, our uh, thing to keep in mind always is do not reject God in times of trials. We should... Instead, ask God, what are you trying to teach us? God loves his children unconditionally, and trials don't change that. We have to be sure that we do not change our commitment to him in times of trial. 
Okay, let's close with the prayer. And uh, we, uh, first of all, pray that uh, God's Word sinks deep into our hearts. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that uh, you have given your Word to us. You, you've uh, preserved us preserved it for us so that uh, we may use it uh, to make good decisions and uh, to recognize in all cases that uh, what we have uh, comes through your blessing. So Lord, uh, be with us in the coming days. Uh, help us remember to ask for your guidance when decisions are to be made and uh, we pray that uh, we can find that rest and peace that uh, we, uh, we are looking for. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.